Alright, welcome to a beginner's guide for Age of Empires 4. Uh, before we start, let me first say, if you are already familiar with the game, if you already have your Sif and are looking for specific build orders, or if you are looking to improve your already good gameplay, this is probably not a video for you. But if you just started Age of Empires 4 or are still struggling playing against AI enemies and are just trying to get the basics of the game, I hope this will help you. So in this video we will look at a fairly basic build order for that you can play for basically each race. Obviously each race uh, has better build orders and can be adapted to perform even better. But what I will show you today will grant you a basic understanding of something that you can do with each race. It will, grant, uh, it will give you a start and from there you can go on and refine your gameplay. So uh, let's just start the game and realize that something went wrong. Let's just start the game again. Perfect. So, um, since we will um, make this so each faction can do it, we will not be using any special any units special to Holy Roman, so we are not training prelates, and we are just doing stuff that each civilization can do. So the first thing you want to do before even starting the game is you want to remember your town center hotkey and also your other um, hotkeys. Since hotkeys is really something that can make or break your game, hotkeys make you way more efficient in playing Age of Empires 4 and to be honest in every tool that you are using. So even if you're at work and you're working with any software, learn the hotkeys, it will make you way faster. So um, when we start a game, we will first of all press the H hotkey, which is the default for the town center. And then we will press Shift Q to queue uh, five villagers from the get go. And this will be our first action. Next off, we will hit Control A to control all of our villagers and put them on our sheep. So let's go. Play H, Shift Q, this queues the villagers. Control A selects everything on the screen. Now I will send my villagers on the sheep with using a right click. And I will left click the sheep and move it inside my town center to get a little bit closer to my town center. Next off, I will use my scout to collect the sheep. You always have three sheep at the beginning. And then select the sheep and drop them off in my town center by holding the right mouse button and then dragging my cursor about over the town center. Next off, you will want to set your waypoint to the sheep and also send your new villager to the sheep and send your scout off somewhere so the scout can collect sheep. If you want to set a specific waypoint, you can hold the shift button while clicking somewhere and then the scout will follow all of the waypoints that you just set. So next off, we want to select a villager by clicking Control F to select a food villager and then just produce a house. If you plan to produce fields right next to your town center, you should leave two squares open. If you don't plan to produce fields here, you can simply um, create a house right next to your town center. You also want to select another villager, drop off the food and build a mine. And you want to select another villager, drop off the food and want to build a lumber camp. And these are your basic camps. Now, make sure to always keep producing villagers until you have eight villagers on food. Once you have eight villagers on food, um, produce the next villager onto gold and then once you have two villagers onto gold, produce the rest onto wood. This will now take a while and whenever you have some free time, use your scout to scout around, try to find sheep or to find out where your opponent is, where relics are, where holy sites are and what they are used for we will go more in depth in a later game. So now we have two on gold, so I will queue the rest of my villagers to, um, to the wood. And I will also just use my scout hotkey to select the scout. Now I can already see where my enemy scout is. And I can just scout it. And always remember to queue more villagers. Now this is uh, very slow what I'm currently doing since I am stopping to explain a lot. Um, usually at this point of the game you should be at 200 gold. And be ready to age up since I'm not at 200 gold but rather used all my sheep up already. I will now need to look for an alternative food source. Um, so the first food source that I could be using are the berries, while the other food source I could be using is a hunt. Uh, currently I have not found a hunt, but they are the deers that will be standing around. So um, in order to collect the berries or the hunt, you will simply build a mill right next to them and then your villagers can go for the berries. 
If you have a hunt available to you, try to use the hunt since villagers collect food from a hunt faster than they do from berries. If you found more sheep during your scouting, great, uh, your villagers can stay on sheep even longer. Now, um, we will be at 200 gold soon. And once we are at 200 gold, we will take our gold villagers and we will build one of our landmarks. Now, which landmark to build depends on your civilization. For me, I will just build one now and I won't use it since, as I said, this is civilization specific. All the while, you will still send all of your villagers to wood. Why wood? Quite easy. Wood is um, responsible for producing buildings and these buildings are then in turn responsible to produce other stuff so if you produce if you produce wood you scale up your economy while if you produce anything else um, you will scale up other things and we will go over those and what each resource is for in other videos now we have some wood ready so first of all i will build barracks these are able to produce melee units and once we are in the next age we will also um, produce an archery range to produce range units and our basic composition against this bot or what you can basically run every time is just spearmen and archers spearmen to counter um spearmen to counter enemy riders and archer to counter enemy spearmen and also enemy archers so um as you can see i'm ovulation kept soon so i will need to adjust this Um, by building another house and I will need to queue more villages. Now my barracks are already finished. I'm not queuing any um, spearmen right now. And it's possible I don't need to if I don't uh, see my enemy building cavalry. But for this practice game and just for the sake of simplicity I will just build some spearmen and some archers. And I will queue them near my opponent's base if I'm under aggression or near my, near my base if my opponent is, uh, is under aggression. So for now we will just continue to produce villagers and wait till our landmarks finished. It's fine to put another villager um, on the landmark and also to put a third villager on the gold, depending on your civilization and your gold needs. In my case my units won't require that much gold, but mostly um, food and wood, so I will stay on food and wood for now. So um, I will now queue the first three spearmen already and then I should be able to build my archery range soon and usually you can expect to get to the next age around half my time that I'm using at the moment. Now next off we will produce the archery range and alre alre I already tried to get used to the hotkey so I will simply press W and then A to produce the archery range. And always um, when you put your um, villagers to build something shift click on the resource they were previously assigned to so they automatically move back. Next off we will also build another house since we are already on 25 population and we will also build um, a workshop a blacksmith or upgrades. Now you won't be able or you won't have this much wood uh, when you reach the stage of the game if you play a lot faster than I do at the moment so don't worry and just do it later. Also, one nice thing to do if you have the attention for it is if the movement to your previous lumber camp gets too long, simply build another lumber camp for your villagers to drop off lumber. So now we have the archery range and we will now simply begin to produce archers and also some more spearmen. And this basic combo will be able to carry you against basically any bot. Uh, my scout will now look at what they are doing. So they are producing a stable and they also gone with the, with the chamber of commerce, which is basically a market. Always uh, press your town center hotkey regularly to go back to your town center. And there is also an all production building hotkey, which allows you to select all your production buildings. Now uh, you can select your blacksmith to produce upgrades. The most important upgrades is usually the iron under mesh, which grants you armor against um, range units, uh, range attacks, or the steel arrow, which um, will allow your archers to hit harder, or the siege engineering, which will allow you to build more. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, not more, but which will allow you to build ramps at all. So in my case, let's go with um, the iron under mesh first, since I. Did not scout whether or not my opponent has range units so if my opponent does not have any range units this is obviously wasted i will also build another house since i'm near the population cap 
and I will queue more villagers and more military units. Now my military units are already here and I will now select all of them and I will assign them a, um, a control group by holding control and a number button on my keyboard. So as you can see they are now all in control group 1 and if I press on the 1 I will select them. Now I can go and start and annoy my opponent by killing his villagers or um, buildings. One thing you should um, make sure is that you do not run into the enemy's town center. Since as you will see it will do a lot of damage to your units, especially the light infantry units and the spearmen will just die. Another thing to note is that Age of Empires runs on a counter based system, so um, certain units are way stronger against other certain units. Um, for example spearmen are way stronger than um, knights against um, or are stronger against knights while archers are very strong against light infantry like spearmen. So now we can already see my enemy also has archers. Um, since my spearmen would need to run into his town center I will just use my archers to um, kill the archer and then after that I will not uh, let my spearmen run into their town center. Since I won't be able to control my units during the next few moments I will pull them back and let them stand here. If you want to make sure your units do not move, you can press the um, V key to have them on stand your ground. In this case, they won't move away. Another nice thing to note is if you want to move your, your unit somewhere and you want to make sure they are not simply being picked off at a, um, during the way, you can simply hold the A key. This will transform your cursor into a sword. And when you click then, you do an attack move. And if you do an attack move, they will just attack everything on their way. So if you're um, sending a unit somewhere, an attack move is usually a good idea. So they are not just picked off by an opponent when you do not watch your units. So just to show the difference, normal move or regular move, they move there and then once they are there, they do something. Or the alternative is attack move. So I attack move there and once they have something in range, they will attack. Now let's go back uh, to our town center where we didn't produce villagers, which is very bad. And uh, we also have um, villagers that don't have anything to do, so we will select them and we'll order them to do something. So um, since we need those villagers on food, we will either produce fields or farms, or we will just put a mill right next to a hunt somewhere. If you found a boar, like this one, you can also just use eight villagers to kill a boar. Um, and then select food from the boar. So in my case, since we are way over on wood, I will simply put down eight fields and these are more than eight fields. No, these are exactly eight fields. Perfect. Also, since I want to upscale my economy, I will um, build a uh, I will put more villagers on food now. So I will select five more villagers or whatever number suits you and just build five more fields. And you can do so by simply holding the shift key and um, left clicking. There's another nice trick for uh, placing fields. And this is simply use the field, then put your key over the mill that you want to place fields around, hold the shift key, and then just left click. And as you can see, the fields will be placed around the mill in a perfect way. So now we have our units here. And basically now we want to push the enemy. So what we need next is a little bit more room. I will just produce three houses now to not worry about it in the future since I have a lot of wood. If you don't have a lot of wood surplus, don't build too many houses in Age of Empires. So we already um, researched the uh, um, anti-arrow skill. Next off we will research siege engineering since this will allow us to push for the enemy's buildings. And once this is researched, we will be able to um, attack the enemy's buildings and finish this game. While we are waiting for it, we will produce more units and if we have the resources, we can also just upgrade our spearmen to H2 spearmen, which will make them a lot stronger. In general, um, you should upgrade your units as fast as possible um, once you reach the next age, as long as you are using those units. And this is one very important thing, do not buy upgrades for units that you are not using. So if I wouldn't be using any spearmen, I wouldn't be buying upgrades for the spearmen right now. Also, if you find yourself having too much wood and you're in need of more um, economy, simply build more production buildings. 
And this is something that I can stress enough, whenever you have the time or idle villagers, simply use them to build production buildings, if your resources allow it, since this will allow you to remax your army way faster after a wipe. So let's have a look at our army, which is still at the front here. And we will now build a battering ram, which can be built in the field. And the battering ram will be able to do a lot of damage to their buildings. And we will also build a second battering ram here, just to make it a little bit faster to finish this game. So let's wait for the battering rams. Let's also produce more villagers. And since my woodline already got quite large, I can now produce another lumber camp here to make uh, the drop off way shorter. So we have my rams and now let's finish the game by simply using the rams to push in their buildings. And if they come with their knights, we will have our spearmen. And if they come with their archers, we will have our archers. So we can already see there, enemy is attacking. We will hold our spearmen back here, since we do not want them to run into the town center. And now we will send our spearmen to attack the knights. In my case, I'm a little bit low on spearmen, so this will go south. Um, but it's not an issue, since I can just produce more army. That's not even going south. Still enough. <laughs> because you can see spearmen really counter... Um, Spearmen really counter cavalry quite hard. Um, so if your opponent is building cavalry, especially if you're playing against a French player, who can build cavalry, cavalry very fast due to their due to their H2 landmark, um, just build spearmen. And then protect them from archers with either your own archers or with your um, light cavalry that you built. So in our case we have our archers. And we will simply, why they do not have to attack something, build the ramps. And we will aim for the enemy's landmarks in our cases. And that's basically it. The first landmark is gone. Our enemy just has two landmarks. And this is, um, this is the very basic concept on how you can play the game. Now, um, to give you some ideas of what units um, you can use. And what units counter what units. Um, let me just interrupt this attack because this would in fact kill the enemy. And let me pull up a stable. So um, there are some units that each um, race has access to. And these are the spearmen or the light infantry. And they counter cavalry, both um, light and heavy cavalry. So if your opponent is going for... Um, Cavalry, just build spearmen. You have the men at arms, which are quite strong on their own. They have a really high armor, which makes them excellent against range units. They are, however, quite slow. So um, if your opponent is massing men at arms, regular archers will be able to outkite them by just running away from the men at arms and shooting at them repeatedly. However, um, that does not make men at arms weak. They are, in fact, one of the strongest units in the game, um, at least considered by many at the moment. Um, so if you just need a front line for, to protect your archers or your siege units, build men at arms, which are the heavy melee infantry. Now let's go to the archery range next. We have the archers, which are the light ranged infantry, or not really the light, I guess the crossbowmen are also light ranged infantry, but the archers are um, very good against light infantry, so archers are really just good against spearmen. Which is really important if you want to supply, or uh, if you want to field cavalry, since you will need to get rid of the enemy spearmen. Other than that, they are also great at sniping villagers, and let me just make sure I don't lose. Okay, no, I don't lose everything here. Uh, they are also really great against villagers, and um, your unit of choice, other than knights or um, light cavalry, if you want to harass your opponent. Next up we have the crossbowmen, also a very strong unit, um, and these are anti ammo specialists. So they get bonus damage if your opponent is using man-at-arms or knights, so the heavy melee or heavy cavalry unit. And um, this is also where they excel against. They will need a frontline and they do not hard counter, or do not really hard counter anything. So you will, um, or you usually don't want to rely on crossbowmen alone. The next unit um, are the Hand Cannoneers, which are only available in the, in the Imperial Age, so in the last age. They are basically your all-purpose best range infantry unit, um, so 
if you have the gold and the food, just build them. They are, however, however, significantly more expensive than their counterparts. Last of all, we have the stables. Here you have the basic horsemen, which are um, yeah, just fast riders that you can use to attack your opponent. Um, and they are especially good at harassing and also at killing archers. But you will need to be careful since they will just die to basically everything else, especially, especially spearmen. Um, the other unit that you can build here are the knights. And knights are really scary, especially from the civilizations who can build knights in H2. So for example, Rus or the French. Since knights are very heavily armored. And this means that the knights will be able to simply um, harass your um, villagers in your town center. If you want to counter any ranged unit, simply build spearmen. Uh, sorry, not any ranged unit. If you want to counter any um, cavalry unit, simply build spearmen. So these are the basic units. Um, each civilization has their own units, which I will go over in a later video where I go um, over the gameplay and flair of each Civ. Um, so they will not be part of today's video. There's one last type of units and to show these, we will first need to reach the third age. And then we will need to build Siege Workshop. And in the Siege Workshop we can build Siege Units. Now Siege Units are very strong, but also very susceptible to be attacked from your enemy. And I will just pull these units back. But as you can see they will just hold their own on their own, so I do not need to monitor them. Uh, since my opponent is not fielding enough strengths to actually kill those units. So, um, last of all we have our Siege Workshop. And Siege can be quite strong. Um, if used correctly. So there are four default siege units that uh, every Sif has, or basically every Sif that has access to. We have the Springles, and Springles are your anti-siege siege. So if your opponent has siege and you need to get rid of it, build Springles, they do really um, high damage against siege. The next door, uh, one are the Mangonels, and Mangonels um, will just fire area of effect damage. Um, so if you have a clump of units, or if your opponent has a clump of units, for example a lot of melee units or a lot of ranged units like crossbowmen or um, archers, you can use mangonels to kill them. They can turn battles around quite quickly, so if your enemy has them, make sure to kill them with your springles. Or um, send your riders to kill them. There's one really important trick with mangonels, and these are the formations. Now, if I would run this formation into a mangonel, it would be pretty much dead since the shot would hit everyone. However, you can simply press C with your units to spread them out and also have them move spread out. And this will make them uh, way more resilient towards mangonels. Just be careful if you attack something. Uh, let me just move to this building. If you attack something, your units will stack up at a max range, so they will be susceptible to mangonel fire again. So just be real care really careful if your opponent has mangonels. As you can see, my units are now stacked again. Now, um, let's go on. To the next unit, we have the trebuchet. Um, it is not that great against units, but it is uh, really strong against buildings, especially since it has a really, really, really high range. And um, so if you find yourself assailing a heavily fortified position, like a castle, a trebuchet or two can be quite helpful. Last but not least, we have the Bombards, which you can only access once you reach the Imperial Age. And the Bombards um, will be your basically strongest um, siege unit. They uh, have really, really high damage, especially against buildings, and will make your opponent's buildings melt. Unless they are killed first, and since they are really, really expensive, it really hurts if they are killed. And yeah, these are the basics of playing Age of Empires 4. We will go into a lot other, uh, into other stuff like building additional town centers or what monasteries and other religious building do in later episodes. But now this is it for this beginner episode. And I hope it granted you an overview of what to do in Age of Empires 4 and about basic unit compositions and yeah, basic game plans. And I will see you next time. Bye.